Hello, I am Leanne Dagaford. I'm one of the kidney donor surgeons here at Massachusetts General Hospital. I'll be talking a little bit today about the surgical procedure associated with donating a kidney. The kidneys are located in the upper abdomen near the back. The kidneys get their blood supply from the aorta, the big blood vessel coming out of the heart and bringing blood to the abdomen and legs. The blood then returns into the inferior vena cava back into the heart. The kidneys make urine and the urine goes down into the ureters, the tubes that carry the urine from the kidney into the bladder. To remove the kidney, we use either laparoscopic or robotic assisted surgery. The incisions, steps, recovery, and risk are very similar between the two types of surgery. The main difference is the camera and the instruments that are used. Once the patient comes into the operating room, we do a final check of the paperwork to make sure the blood types agree. Then the patient is put to sleep. Once the patient is sleeping, a breathing tube is placed to help the lungs expand and one into the stomach to suck out the stomach contents, giving the surgeons room to work. The patient could awake with a sore throat that gets better quickly. Then a catheter is placed in the bladder to collect the urine and the catheter stays in place until the morning after surgery. The patient is rotated to lay on their side for the surgery and we take extra care to make sure all the joints are padded. Then an approximately 2.5 to 3 inch long incision is made close to the pubic bone. It is similar to where a woman would have a C-section incision, and that is the incision that the kidney is removed through. There are about three to four other incisions that are no more than half an inch long. Through these incisions, we place surgical instruments and a camera. The organs that lie in front of the kidney are rotated away. On the left, that is the spleen, pancreas, stomach, and large intestine. On the right, the liver, the first part of the bowel, the large intestines and the gallbladder are all rotated away. The adrenal glands stay in place while the kidney is removed. We remove the fat off the kidney. All kidneys have some fat around them. And the last step is to divide the artery, the vein, and the ureter. We use a surgical stapling device to do that, and there is a risk of bleeding that could possibly require a bigger open incision. Making this open incision is very, very rare. After the kidney is removed through that lower incision, all the incisions are sewed up in layers and the last layer is absorbable suture. And then on top of that, we place surgical glue or steri strips. There are no skin sutures that have to be removed. We put local numbing medicine, much like what they do at the dentist, into the abdominal wall to give an extra 24 hours of pain relief. The risk of surgery are related to damaging the things that are being rotated away from the kidney, risk of bleeding, risk of infection, hernia at the incision site, or risk of injury to the kidney itself. There are also risks of anesthesia that could include blood clots that develop in the legs and go to the lung, heart, or brain. The surgery itself takes about two to three hours, but everything else we just described takes about four hours total in time in the operating room. After surgery, the patient goes to the recovery room for a few hours and then to the post-operative floor. Usually that night, the patient just has clear liquids because some people can be a little nauseated from the anesthesia. The next morning, we turn off the IV fluids, take the catheter out of the bladder, and get the patient up walking. Also, we give you regular food. Usually, the patients spend one more night in the hospital, and then they go home about noon on the next day or the second day after surgery. You can shower once you get home and let the water and uh, soap just run over the incision. We do not recommend swimming or bathing where the incisions are soaked underwater until they are very well healed, which is about four weeks after surgery. We also recommend no heavy lifting, nothing more than a gallon of milk for about six weeks after surgery. Stairs and walking are fine to do and are very good exercise. We really encourage you to walk. You will be discharged from the hospital with a few narcotic pain pills, but many donors only require a few doses at home. You can take up to 4,000 milligrams of Tylenol in a 24-hour period. 
That means you can take two extra strings or 500 milligram tablets every six hours. Donors should not take medications in containing non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs such as naproxen, ibuprofen, or Advil after donating a kidney. We ask that you avoid them for the rest of your life. However, Tylenol is safe to use. Additionally, narcotic pain medicine and anesthesia can slow your bowels, so it is important to take stool softener and try to have a bowel movement each day. It will be uncomfortable if you get constipated and bloated after surgery. We do our follow-up visits virtually about one week after donation. You can get your labs at a hospital or Quest Labs close to your house, and then we will have a visit via the computer. After your visit, you are able to drive as long as you have not taken narcotic pain medication for at least 24 hours before driving. Many people are eager to return to work, but each person recovers differently and returns to work differently depending on their job. If your job requires heavy lifting or a lot of standing, we recommend six to eight weeks before returning to work. For other people, four weeks of recovery is very reasonable and people who work from home may want to return to work even sooner than four weeks. Some donors notice short-term fatigue while recovering from surgery, so if you do return to work soon after your operation, you may want to work part-time for a week or two if allowed by your job. You can discuss your individualized return-to-work plan with your team in more detail.